I was in, when I was in the uh, force, like, and they said that um, I was working when I came out of the Andrew, the Navy. I was working down at Mill War in the dock where I was doing And uh, they said, uh, you've been picked wrong for the Olympics? I said, yes, Governor, I've been picked for the Olympics. So said, where are you going to train? I said, well, the team's going away. He said, well, why aren't you going away? I said, I can't afford it. So I'm the breadwinner indoors. All my brothers were married. I said, I'm the breadwinner. So I said, I've got to, I've got to work. And the first thing he done, he said, Set the bottle. I'm not saying it as if it was yesterday. He said, Mary, get Ronnie three weeks' wages. Here's your wages, and away with the team. And I went down to Wargrave with the British boxing team in a school where Peter Brenner, our featherweight, his son goes there now. And there's all, and I've got the team. Little Henry Carpenter, our flyweight. Tommy Prophet, our bantamweight. Peter Brenner, our featherweight. Myself, lightweight. Walter White was Johnny Ryan or Maxi, Maxi, um, Maxi, Maxi. Walter White was Johnny Wright, the rest is old. Don Scott the Cruiser and, and Jack Gardner, the heavyweight. Johnny Mortis was second string to Jack Gardner. And uh, that was our team. And we tried, <laughs> I laughed. <laughs> Say, what did you train on, Ron? I said, we, I said, what did we train on? I said, I can remember going out to Switzerland, even though I did 47 the box, for Great Britain. And I sat down there, because you know Switzerland was a neutral country. And uh, they come down, and we like to eat. I said, food. And they put a steak in front. I said, what's that? They said, because you know Switzerland was neutral during the Second World War. And they gave me a steak. I went, is that a steak? I said, I haven't seen one for six years. You haven't? I said, no. I said, food we've never seen none like in England. It was on ration. I think we was getting uh, two ounces of bacon, two ounces of sugar, two ounces of a bottle of milk, a loaf of bread or half a loaf per person. And, and I'll, I'll show it to you. For a week's ration, my next door neighbor said, I'll eat that in a day. Right? I said, well, that's how we lived. And people don't realise we were from Russian from 39 to 54. My son is now 56 and we had a, a Russian book for him from 1954. And people don't realise. She said, yeah, we had no... I said, how are we living to eight in there? We must have a bit of a constitution for nine years of starving during the war. So I said, so they must have good... I mean, my brother Sigur, as his soul, he died this time last year. He died of 90, um, when you come and say, well, no, he, died, he was 90 when he died. He worked in the doctor and he was a prisoner of all the Japanese for four years. So he must have had a constitution like iron to work down the doctor for 20 odd years, same as me, and we're all my brothers, and to live right through the war. And he was starved. He was starved on a little bag of rice, maggot rice and a bit of bread for four years. And now we were starved. We was, we was living in the alternate compared to what he was, my brother said. Plus all my other brothers, like, you know, but he was a prisoner. It was 18 months before we heard from him, you know, as a prisoner. But getting back to the fight game, um, it, it just come out of me. When we was down at Wargrave, from fly to lightweight, we'd go out on the road. And from welter to overweight, we'd stop in the gym. One day, and then the next day, you reverse it. We used to go in the gym and they would go out on the road. And that's how, and for food, <laughs> after that, the food, they used to say, give Ronnie Cooper, because I love custard and jelly. That to me was a steak. And I said, I, give me all the custard and jelly, you can keep any meat, give it to the others, I'll have the custard. But we never had no meat. So, oh, sorry. We never had no meat, did we? We had no. And, uh, but custard and jelly, I loved it. I love it now. When I used to have a fight, I say, Mum, we got your custom jellies out there, it's red hot. <laughs> and I loved it. I could, to me, custom jelly was a steak to me. I'd fight anyone with custom jelly down. I just loved it, you know. And, uh, but for food wise, we were starved. We was absolutely starved. I don't care what anyone, you know. And I was talking to a couple of Olympians. He said, I, I, I did not too bad. The pinnacle of the fight amateur game the Olympic Games, to wear the Olympic blazer for Great Britain on that. That's the pinnacle of amateur boxing. And you feel proud with the old Berry and that, you know, walking out, little 20-year-old, still wiping his nose, like, you know. But you feel so proud, you feel like, when I got that, that Olympic blazer on, I felt like me, I bust the buttons on my shirt, you know. Yeah. That's how you felt. Because you can't go no higher, can you? That's the top of the...
boxed at Wembley. And I think I boxed, mostly I boxed at Wembley. They were talking about White City. I can't remember White City boxing at White City. I might have done, but I think mostly where I boxed the Dutch champion, beat him. And then I boxed European champion. Funny enough, that was the first time I ever got put on the deck as an amateur. And I walked, as I walked, I, I said, like, this is where I'm sitting like this, with my gloves on, sitting the next one. I walked down to the ring, I, boxed, I got put down in the first round, and then I, they told me I had him down in the second round, Maxim McCullough, and the third round, and they said, yeah, I said, what a fight. What's the I said, I didn't feel a thing. I didn't even remember going in. I didn't remember coming out. <laughs> I couldn't, I don't remember it. And when I was sitting like that, I went, oh, we do that, boy. He said, so he said, I said, what's the matter? I said, you gone in yet? Yeah. He said, you've been in. I said, don't tell me. He said, you lost on points, but what a fight you've had. Because Maxie McCulloch could bang. He could not. I said, it's the first time I ever got put on a deck. And uh, I said, but I had a lovely letter from the Irish ABA telling me what a fantastic fight it was. In our, I think our one in 48, I think, I think it was about, ten, I was just about two grand, I think it might have been a bit more. But now it's crossing 10 billion. And with the sponsors that are going, they must have the finest games in the world. They've got to have. Everything's being done for them. It's entirely different than that, though. We must remember this. We come out, just come out of a five-year war, have not we? And so there's bombs everywhere being planted. There must have still been bombs on the floor. But uh, getting from that, we, we've got to different venues. I think, if I can recollect, I think we had two boxing rings over a swimming pool. And one of the South Africans had a bad decision and they knocked the referee and slung him in the drink. <laughs> I'll go back a look. There you are, that's uh